Hi. Are we on? Yeah? OK, cool. How's everyone doing? How amazing is JSConf Iceland so far? Yeah. OK, stop. I have a talk to make. So let me start with a confession. I less than three JavaScript. JavaScript is amazing and weird and peculiar and awesome and strange. JavaScript is the only language I know of where you take your code, uh, run it through an uglifier, only to then run it through a prettifier. And I mean, we've created an ecosystem that allows people to contribute so much that now we constantly complain when people contribute things. Um, and JavaScript is everywhere. So my browser runs JavaScript. My server runs JavaScript. My TV runs JavaScript. My washing machine, well, that doesn't run JavaScript. That probably runs C++, but only because you need pointers and memory management when you're handling uh, soft fabrics. And, uh, and according to some TV shows, JavaScript can even run weapons guidance systems. <laughs> well, only if you're using jQuery, that is. <laughs> like, they haven't uploaded the code to GitHub, so I didn't test it yet, but like, it looks legit. So um, we, JavaScript is, is, you know, it's ubiquitous. Everyone uses it. And you can, you know, do everything with it. But you don't have to trust me. Like, you don't have to trust what I'm saying. You can trust this book from 2003, literally titled, How to Do Everything with JavaScript. And this book teaches you amazing things, like uh, version 1.x or version 2.0. New stuff. Um, OK. So um, JavaScript does a lot of things. But I'm here to show you uh, maybe things that you, weren't, you thought weren't possible with JavaScript or uh, kind of off the beaten path. The cool thing about web technologies is that they allow all of our ideas, the good and interesting ones, as well as the dumb and silly ones. OK, so my name is at Offervi. Uh, I come from you from uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, where the uh, spoken language is loud Hebrew. Um, and um, you might not, not notice, but uh, uh, my name, Offer, in Hebrew means fun, you know, like Bambi. Not sure why I just told you that. That seemed important at the time. Um, I'm a designer, a musician, I'm sometimes a gamer. Uh, and it turns out that JavaScript is really good for all of these things. So that makes me a developer. Um, in my day to day, uh, I work at a company called Echo as a creative developer. What exactly is a creative developer? Uh, according to some definitions, those being my definition, uh, that means someone who works with cre other creative people like filmmaker, uh, game makers, musicians, designers, to do all sorts of cool interactive things on the web. And I want to start uh, by telling you a little story about myself and how I got into web development. So the year was like 97 or 98, and I was 15 years old. And I was spending a weekend over at my grandfather's. Um, and it is there that I found a book about HTML. And that book was mesmerizing. I remember working hours with Notepad and uh, Netscape 4, like trying to, to figure out like, what this thing does. And uh, I read about this amazing technology called links that allow you to connect one web page to the other web page. And that seemed amazing. Like, that seemed, uh, but the problem is it did, didn't work so well for me. Like, I didn't know what was the problem. Like, I, I knew I did something wrong, but I wasn't sure like, what was wrong. And then it hit me after a few hours. You see, it's not called a herf element. It's called a ref element, because that makes so much more sense, you know? Uh, ref and not herf. Anyway, you understand why I didn't have a girlfriend until the age of 20. Um, but fast forward a few weeks later, and my ha I had my first website up on GeoCities. Does anyone remember GeoCities? Yeah, I don't care. Um, uh, it looked kind of something like 
this. Actually, it more looked more like uh, this. And you know, you're laughing at this because it's you know it's hilarious. Uh, but we didn't have fancy technology back then. We didn't have CSS and the cloud or any idea what we were doing. We had to build our websites with nested tables. I mean, these kinds of uh, nested tables. And um, long, not long after, like I honed my skills. I worked on making websites in the early or late 90s, that is. And um, I finally, as a teenager, was able to make some pocket money by um, making websites for companies. So like one of the first websites I've ever made, an actual company paid me actual money <laughs> for this thing. And I don't know why it looks like this. Like maybe uh, <laughs> shoe-shaped sidebars were all the rage back then. Um, but uh, the, the funny thing about this is that it actually has a button that allows you to turn off JavaScript. How, like that's an amazing feature. Um, but OK, enough about me and my sense of nostalgia. Nostalgia. Um, let's talk about JavaScript. So what is JavaScript? JavaScript allows us to add functionality to websites. So turn them from static things to interactive experiences. So take a look at this simple phone input number, uh, phone number input, for example. So you know, it's styled nice with CSS. But this has a slight issue, because like, if you want to use this, you need to like, point your mouse at the input and then you know, use the keyboard to input your numbers. And um, like, that's, that's inefficient. That's inconvenient. You'd say, like, maybe we can add buttons so that you don't have to use the keyboard if you don't want to. So OK, that's really easily solved with JavaScript. Let's add buttons. There, <laughs> problem solved. Like, now the user can just click on that button until he reaches his, his or hers phone number, and we're done. And I know what you're thinking. Like, this is, an, this is a joke. This is an inefficient method of inputting numbers. So yeah, I know, I hear you. Let's, let's fix that. that. Let's make this more efficient with JavaScript. There, we're done. <laughs> and, and I know, we're, it's like we're, we're, already, we're already there. But we, we can continue improving this. I mean, JavaScript gives us so much uh, power and strength. Um, we can make this just better for all of, yours, all of our users. We can just, you know, we can just uh, endless. <laughs> So I studied design at the Bezalel Academy of Art and Design in Jerusalem, which is one of the best design schools in Israel, with one of the worst design logos in Israel. <laughs> like, I don't know what they were thinking. It's like, I can't even, OK. So when I, when I studied there, I came to realize just how amazing would it be if we can connect technology and art. And Web technologies allow us to do that. So check out this example from uh, Matt Deloria. And here we see, uh, using Canvas and JavaScript, um, uh, an interactive generative artwork, where every time you click, you get something completely new. So every user that, uh, that just plays with it gets his or her own artwork. How amazing is that? And that's JavaScript. I mean, that's just, you know, just code, just JavaScript, and this creates these amazing patterns. But you can take this a step further. Uh, you can transform this into 3D, for example. So this one from um, the Google Data Arts team uh, generates, does generative machines um, via 3JS uh, and WebGL and JavaScript. So every time you click Generate, you get this new machine, this beautiful thing that is generated from uh, seemingly randomness. Or uh, another example would be this example, where you have uh, procedurally generated old-timey airplanes. So every time you click on the next button, you get this new flying machine. And that's, that's super cool. If you want to uh, learn more about uh, generating things, I, should, I definitely recommend you to take a time machine and go back into Kate Copton's uh, talk yesterday. And if you don't have that, then when the talks are up, you should check that. Um, so, um, these are all personal experiences. So you see them on your computer, on your own personal monitor. But JavaScript can do so much more. It can go out of your personal uh, monitor 
and turn into a public thing. So this, by, this uh, work by Marpy, a Polish-born, Polish San Francisco-based uh, digital artist, lets users um, play and generate 3D uh, objects and worlds using the 3GS and the HTC Vive. Uh, so this is a an public an, uh, art piece in a public, public space. Uh, and the users can then um, take the things that they did and print them in a 3D printer. And you can even go bigger than that. So there is a country uh, somewhere close to the North Pole, or so I've heard, called Iceland. And there, they have sometimes they do a conference where you can actually paint on the building where the conference is at. Um, if you ever get a chance, I definitely recommend going to that conference. Um, but, uh, 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 but, art, but art is a really good way to uh, to learn and understand things. Uh, it it's a, serves a good way uh, to and, and the learning tool. So this uh, is a project, like a self-project I made while I was uh, studying design. And I was really obsessed with the idea of evolution. So evolution is a really hard concept to, to understand and visualize because you have like mutation and, um, and uh, survival of the fittest, and time, and generations. So I thought, like, maybe I can create something that will help me understand it. So I did this uh, little code pen with uh, just, you know, Canvas and JavaScript. And this has uh, digital creatures with very simple rules. Big creatures eat little creatures. Little creatures eat food. Little creatures run away from big creatures. And then you get this, like, from simple rules, this amazing um, uh, system which it's kind of like a virtual aquarium that you can look at. And all these emerging patterns arise, and it's just mesmerizing. mesmerizing. It's just you know simple JavaScript. So I thought, OK, how can we take that a step further? And I turned this into 3D, you know, because 3D are it's always nicer. But the cool thing about that is the web is all about sharing. So you can share your experience some with someone else. So I thought about, if I have my aquarium, and you have yours, what would happen if these two ecosystems would, were to meet? So if my, I have my creatures, and I open a portal up to your browser where you have your creatures, well, how would the two ecosystems interact? Which Will one of them uh, completely obliterate the others? Will new creatures arise? Like That's super cool. That's something you can do just by typing JavaScript and hitting refresh a lot of the times. How amazing is that? But there are different ways to do learning. So one of these is machine learning. And uh, JavaScript also allows you to do that. So JavaScript might not be like the first thing you think of when you think about uh, like machine learning, but it turns out that's a possibility. So uh, deeplearn.js is a machine learning uh, uh, library in JavaScript. And I'm going to show you an example here. And the way it works is that I'm going to play a little melody. And then you, via machine learning, we're going to hear another melody that's based on what I just played. So let's try this out. So I didn't say it's going to be a good melody, it's just that <laughs> it's going to work. OK. And if we're on the topic of music, music videos. So I remember, again, as a kid, watching, being glued to the screen, watching. MTV and Weej1, and those all were passive experiences. But the web allows us to be interactive. So this is kind of an old, but really cool example, uh, Three Dreams of Black, where you, you have 2D animation, 3D animation, or whatever the user points the mouse, like the stream of uh, animals run around on the building. And that way, every user gets his or hers own personal experience. And it doesn't end there. So um, this video clip for, uh, for Arcade's Fire uh, Reflector uses WebGL and, and shaders. So wherever you point the mouse, like there's an image manipulation there. And also some uh, 3D where the, uh, the dancer in the video has this 3D thing overlaid on top of her, which you can play with. Super cool stuff. And I mean, the options are endless. This video by uh, Real Estate is an actual like canvas that you can paint on. So, you, like here, I tried to paint the sky blue. 
which is really hard when the video keeps moving. But you know, it gives you something to play with. You're, you're creating art on top of someone else's art. And this is something that's only possible due to web technology. Um, the next project is something I'm really proud of. It's something I did at work. This is the official video for Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone. So what happens here is that you have 16 different channels of video. Um, and in each different channel, the characters in the video are lip syncing to Bob Dylan's Dylan song. And then the user can pick which channel to watch. So instead of watching one music video, you're like kind of uh, creating your own personal music video. And again, this is like web video. It's just, you know, like a video player in JavaScript, and it, there are challenges here. But it's just pointing your browser somewhere and seeing this. Cool. So, OK, you can clap. It's OK. That's one of the things we do. One of the ultimate forms of interactive entertainment is video games, a, a subject really close and dear to my heart. Um, and video games come in all forms and sizes, especially on the web. So video games can be something really small, like this uh, mini game in the website for the magicians, a sci-fi TV show, where they use uh, canvas and HTML elements and some video to create some engagement while you're uh, watching, the, while you're interacting with the website. Or a video game can be like a 2D thing. Uh, this is a game I made to teach kids concepts in evolution. Uh, have I mentioned that I like evolution already? OK, never mind. Uh, this was done with uh, a 2D library called Phaser, which is based on a render called Pixie. Um, but you know, again, you can take this to 3D. So this is an actual 3D pinball game running in the browser. And the interesting thing here is that there's physics involved. There's a, a library called P2Physics in the background actually doing the calculations. So you have physical simulation, again, running in the browser. But everything that we just saw is a single player experience. So it's just you sitting in front of your uh, computer or mobile or whatever playing. But the web, again, is all about connecting people. It's all about sharing. So uh, the natural step from this is multiplayer games, players that have many players. This one uh, called Wonders IO by uh, a game developer and designer uh, called Resner uh, gives you control over a tribe, uh, and then you fight other tribes for resources, for land. Um, and that's super cool. I mean, games are usually written in things like C and C++ to be close to the metal or whatever. But then you have to download uh, drivers and update your graphics card and you know all these things. But what if you could just point out your browser to a web page and just play with someone else without having to download anything. So uh, that is what I had in mind when I wrote uh, this library, uh, Lance, which you can find Lance DG. And Lance is a kind of a server and a client that allows people to create their own video games, online video games, web video games, without having to worry about writing netcode or synchronization or all the ugly stuff that I had to pull my hair over to do. Um, and what can you do with Lance? So this is a game that I made with Lance. It's called uh, Sprocket League. And it has nothing to do with any other game with a similar name. But in this game, uh, each player controls a car. And these, car, uh, these cars actually play soccer. And you, you ha this runs with um, 3D physics engine running on the server, on the client. And again, this is all web technologies. It, this is all stuff that you, you can do with just Notepad. You shouldn't do this with Notepad, but you can if you want to. <laughs> OK. Uh, another really cool technology that, uh, that's up and coming, but also out there, is WebAssembly, or its precursor, ASM, which essentially allows you to take um, other languages like C or C++, or it could be anything, and compile them to a binary that the browser can understand. And then you have the browser running something that's far more effective at computation. So what does this help us with? Uh, an example would be porting the entire Unreal game engine, which is like a serious thing, uh, uh, web, uh, a game engine, 
and run it in the browser using WebGL. So what you're seeing, seeing here is not JavaScript. It wasn't written in JavaScript, but it runs in the browser, and JavaScript can interface with this. And WebAssembly is going to be great for a lot of things that are computationally expensive, like uh, audio manipulations, video filters, everything that needs some uh, juice powering it. But I'm excited about uh, a lot of things that have to do with uh, virtualization and um, running in the browser. So what if, and bear with me, what if you could run Windows 3.11 in the browser? How amazing would that be? So you could just like open up Paint and uh, do something, or you can like uh, open up Solidaire. You could uh, completely, completely reimagine how was it when you were sitting in your mom's basement <laughs> in the 90s. Um, and this gets us to their next uh, technology, which is Web Virtual Reality, or Web VR. So maybe you've heard about this, but a way to learn about subjects that I don't know is to, a way that I like, is to look at stock photos of that specific thing. So if we look at stock photos of Web VR, we can learn all sorts of things. Like, for example, Web VR is kind of taking a stroll out in nature, and maybe we have rainbows coming out of your crotch. Um, or maybe WebVR is sometimes being attacked by really old phones. Or, or maybe you don't need to put anything, like you, maybe you don't need to put VR goggles to be in WebVR. Maybe you just need to take headphones and then put them on your eyes and point at something, and that works just as well. Um, but VR and WebVR specifically is all about putting you inside a virtual world. So uh, in this example, you're in this musical landscape um, where you have, do we have oh, sound, 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 yeah, okay. Um, and, you, and we have these um, cute tiny creatures which, where everyone does, has its own uh, little sound and you can kind of play around with them and you're completely immersed in this thing. Um, but virtual reality is a, oftentimes a uh, product of 3D models and like something that's completely virtual. And at work, I did something really cool. Uh, it's this project called Broken Night, uh, which is a film, a live action film, which showed in uh, the Tribeca Film Festival last year, uh, starring Emily Mortimer. And the idea here is that you're inside this film and you can control it. So the plot for this, without too many spoilers, is that there is this couple and they had an argument and they, they're coming back home. And then uh, there's an intruder in the house. And you get to live that moment. Um, so you have, like, for example, the two characters, um, the man and the woman, and she takes the gun. And uh, then, as, as a viewer, you see the, the past split. The, the project actually splits into two. And wherever you look, that's where the story is going to take place. So does the guy get the gun? Does the girl get the gun? You, you get to choose. And then you actually I see you with the gun. this the gun interactive back. video the story that you would prefer to see. So the story is not linear. It's completely interactive. There's nobody in there. Cool, right? This leads us to our next thing, which is uh, web augmented reality, or as I like to call it, web R. Um, and if virtual reality is all about putting you in the virtual space, augmented reality is all about taking the virtual space and putting it in the real space, in the real world. So this example from Disney Research allows um, you to take like a tablet and point it at a kid's uh, coloring book, and whatever the kid draws like comes into life in 3D. Um, so recent developments in AR uh, allow you to actually do that or at least potentially do that in the browser. And there was a talk about this by Reza yesterday, also suggested you check that out. So we talked about WebVR, and we talked about WebAR, and today there's a new buzzword that if you combine these two technologies, it is now called WebXR, or Web Extended Reality. Uh, and I know uh, Mozilla is pushing hard on a standard that uh, um, to, to progress this forward. And I know I'm joking, but this is like super cool stuff. So the last, last thing we're going to talk about is the physical web, or the Internet of Thingies. Um, and 
there are a lot of interesting stuff going on there. So one of these is NodeBots, which is a movement that um, aims to get JavaScript on actual robots. Um, so for example, if you have a robot and you have Node, and if your computer is in Spanish, then <laughs> you can actually control the robot via JavaScript. And that's pretty cool to my eyes. Or, or you can do something um, more, uh, you know, uh, something better. You can make a cat remote control. So all you need to, to do f in order to get that is you need an Arduino, and you need the Johnny 5 JavaScript library, and you also probably need a cat. That's a requirement. Um, or how about controlling a drone? from your browser uh, on your phone. So this is done via web Bluetooth. So this example from Peter O'Shaughnessy shows how he's using uh, JavaScript in his browser on his phone to connect to a drone and just fly it. So there's no app. He, he didn't download any app to do this, just like JavaScript API. Um, and this works today on uh, mobile Chrome and also on Samsung Internet, which turns out is a browser. Uh, but super, super cool that you can do that. So everything that I just showed you is, um, is out there you, in the wild. You can just use that right now. What, what does the future hold? What does, what's coming up next? So according to Westworld, an HBO sci-fi show um, about AI robots uh, that run a theme park, these AI robots are written using React. So I saw Dan, Dan's talk yesterday. He didn't say anything about robots, but maybe that's like in the next version. I don't know. Hopefully, yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, but other upcoming technologies. Web USB that allows you to connect peripherals directly to the browser. Um, Web NFC for uh, near field communications from the browser. Or Web MIDI for uh, the music people among us. And I want to end with something uh, that gives you a little perspective. This was the first web server ever that Tim Berners-Lee used in CERN. And it literally had a sticker that says, this is the internet, don't power it down. <laughs> and this was the first website that was used that, that it showed. And you know, what a, what a way we've done from that day to what we can do today with web technologies. I mean, that started there, and here we are, you know, 400 people who are passionate about web technologies coming together to meet in Iceland to talk about this thing that we're so passionate about. How amazing is that? So I'm going to leave you with a parting gift, um, something, an idea that might, again, not be the best, but it's definitely not the worst, and that is a JavaScript dance party. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Wait, but before, before, before you leave, and before you leave, and before I relinquish the stage, um, my wa wife went on the significant other tour, and I have to show her that I had more fun than she, uh, than her. Yeah. So I'm gonna take a selfie of myself with you, and uh, you're going to uh, make it appear as if you've had the time of your life in this talk, <laughs> and then I am going to win because winning is important in marriage. Okay, <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three, raise your hands. Thank you so much.